Hello everybody, ciao a tutti and welcome to Art with Miss B. Today we're gonna spend some time together doing a beautiful design. It's very, um, I would say, simple and approachable, so it's perfect for all skill levels and, you know, every art, previous art experience, so you're gonna uh, be able to follow step by step my process. This design is uh, uh, particularly focused on a positive and negative space. So we're gonna play a little bit with that positive and negative through the colors and the use of black. So it's very easy if you are, um, if you want to understand the concept a little more, if you wanna see how negative and positive spaces interact between each other in a design. Of course, as always, we're gonna exercise our fine motor skills, mental focus, mental relaxations, coordination skills between brain and head, and is a wonderful exercise for every age. If you're doing this with your kids, with your grandkids, if you're homeschooling children, this is a perfect opportunity to talk about positive and negative space and maybe also create some analogies and comparison of what positive and negative spaces means in visual art and what it could mean in other uh, field or other subject matters and so on and on. I love to do this in school when we connect art with other topics, uh, with other subjects, uh, with other matters, because I feel that you can learn uh, much more, right, the concept and the kids uh, really understand it much better. So I feel that what works very well for kids and teenagers definitely will work as a, for adults as well. For this practice, you need your art journal, mix and media paper. If you do not have a journal, you can use a loose piece of mix and media paper. Remember that you can cut it if you have a big pad. You can cut the pages in half. So every time that you do a tutorial with me, you don't feel overwhelmed about like a, by the size and of the project and you are able, you will be able to complete it. So to commit to the practice, remember that finishing what we start in general, not only in art, it's very important and it's very therapeutic, I want to say. Um, if you don't have a journal, I also invite you to create a folder so you can uh, keep uh, everything uh, organize all together and you will be able to go back to those practice, uh, compare them, uh, maybe they will be inspiration for your future practice so you can see your improvement, right? Uh, then we need a pencil for drawing and razor just in case. If you want something that is very precise, so you can also use the ruler. I want it because as I told you several times, I like when things are extremely well done, but they still feel organic and holistic and very spontaneous. But if you want something more geometric, take a ruler so you can create a perfect square and then divide the square into smaller perfect square four. Then we need a regular black Sharpie or any brand that you have available, an extra fine black Sharpie or any brand that you have available. And then I will use my alcohol markers, any brand that you have available. If you do not have alcohol markers and you have regular markers, mostly if you're working with kids, it's totally fine. It will be beautiful and it's a beautiful opportunity for you to review with them the nice, good, quality of coloring and coloring technique so it's perfect i will use probably different shades of green because today i feel as you see from my t-shirt i feel that i need a green i spend a lot of time outside because i really feel that today was the perfect day to surround myself with some green but since it's you i suggest you to do your own choices and if you want to surround yourself with warm color go for a palette of yellow dark and light orange and red. If you have uh, another color that you feel that you really want to see today, use it uh, and uh, so on. I'm going to switch the camera so we can start. Here we are. This is my journal. I'm going to start with a pencil and I will slowly trace the four straight lines, two vertical and two horizontal to kind of reframe my space and make it just a little smaller. You can do the same, and as I say before, you can do this step with the ruler. You can measure, and maybe you can have, I don't know, it, it would be one, two, three, four, five, six, six inches by six inches, maybe, or eight by eight, you do you. And then in the case, you will take the half of it, the half of it, half and half, very precisely. Okay, I'm gonna do it by hand. because I like to see that organicity, probably this one, I'm gonna lift it up a little. And now we have four equal spaces, right? I'm gonna more or less kind of create a little dot in the center 
of each space. And once again, if you want to do it precisely with your ruler, you will trace the diagonal, diagonal, actually trace it super light. So you will have the perfect center in each square. Now from the center, we're going to work on the corner and we are going to do like a big leaves. So you do one curved line all the way to the center and the same to the other side. And we do it in every single square. If you wanna, if you need to turn the journal as I am turning it, do so because you wanna try your best. So this big leaf, they look uh, as close, like very similar as much as possible, which is an incredible exercise, mostly for beginner and for kids uh, to go slow, follow with your eyes uh, the movement of your pencil and uh, Try to be as precise as possible. There you go. As you can see, they are very similar. They are not perfectly the same, but they are really, really, really pretty. We do the same and we keep going until we are all done. Nice and puffy. So we give ourselves a pretty big leaf to play around with colors and with pattern. And this is a beautiful exercise also of symmetry, right? We want to try to do something that is symmetric, so that looks the same at both sides. Now it's going to be really, really hard to do it, but the more we practice, the better. This is also the same shapes that the kids, and then usually, you know, you can help them to work on this shape because it's the same shape that they can use to create maybe a little fish, some leaves in when they do flowers or butterflies, right? So it's a very cool exercise to uh, practice. And there are so many concepts that you can include in this, for example, as you're teaching them measurement, if you're teaching them uh, geometric uh, design, the use of a ruler, in that case, I really suggest you to let them use the ruler, as I do with my students in design, when we really create something that we measure. I'm gonna move actually this center now that I'm looking at it. I think I want it closer to it was a little too low. Go all the way. The secret is, as I always say to my students, is go slow. If you need to go slower, better. But if you move your hands really, really fast, you won't be able to control it. Look how beautiful and pretty is this design. Now we're going to have fun. We're going to start with the black and we can retrace uh, like the, the frame. Oh my, let me change the markers because I got one that doesn't really work as well. I'm going to take a new one. There we go. Much better. Very slowly, once again, if you need to use the ruler for this step, go for it or you do it little by little, very slow. And in the case that you still see the line with the pencil underneath your markers, you can always erase the pencil with an eraser and nothing is going to happen, right? Now we're going to also go over the central line, the vertical and the horizontal one. Now with patient, we're going to go over these beautiful leaves that we trace. And this is also an extremely opportunity, extremely good opportunity to exercise our fine motor skill twice. The first time we did it with the pencil and now we feel more confident and we go over with the marker. We never, we should never underestimate the power of repetition and practice, right? Practice make it, you know, I don't want to say perfect because as you know, we belong, I belong to the movement of imperfectionism, but I want to say that practice makes it good and satisfying and worth it, right? and rewarding for us. 
So when my kids sometimes, uh, you know, that you always have that student that like to be done, uh, be quick, uh, and they want to do, okay, I guess that I can do it directly with the markers, right? I always say, with the marker, I always say, no, we cannot for two reasons. One, that you cannot erase the marker. So unfortunately, and that happened when you are a beginner and you're still learning, you're going to make mistakes. And those lines won't go exactly where you want them to go. And unfortunately, if you use a black a Sharpie, that is really nothing that you can do just to throw away the paper. And we do not waste paper because paper comes from tree and trees and we don't want to kill more tree than we need, sacrifice more of them. And also I don't like to waste materials and resources because they cost money. And second, because if you do the pencil first and then you do the markers, you will practice twice the same skills and practice twice the same skill, it's better than practice it only one time. So, and I usually, I'm able to convince even the most stubborn <laughs> of my students. But definitely, I always need to keep an eye on them because you will always have that one or two students saying, hmm, let me find a shortcut. Okay, once again, if there is some lines that bothers you, you can go with your eraser, erase it. I think that it's uh, pretty good. Now we're going to keep these big markers and we're going to color in one square, we're going to color the negative. The negative is the space that surrounds the main shape. In the other one, we're going to color the positive, positive and negative. Okay, so we create a sort of an alternating pattern of positive and negative spaces. And at that, after we do the black, you will have extremely clear the concept of positive and negative spaces that for adults and people who are familiar already with visual art or they have been practicing with me a lot or by themselves, it's very familiar, but it's not familiar for everybody and mostly for kids and younger uh, artists or learners. Sometimes they can get confused, right? Because positive and negative, as I say, in uh, other fields, in our language, in other uses of these words, they can mean something completely different than what they mean in visual art. It's a little bit like the word value, right? Value in art has a very specific meaning related to the amount of light, right? And the shading. And in life and in other, like a subject value, the value of something has could be something completely different. So I feel that visualizing with simple exercises that emphasize that specific uh, um, element that we want to learn about is fantastic and very effective for our young learners, visual learners. So, and then you can create uh, so many connections, right? Between this practice and other practices that are not art related which I love, you know, I really like the interdisciplinary, interdisciplinary quality of art. Look at me, big words. Now, negative, here is going to be the positive, and the positive is the space inside. So you can do with the technique that I use for the negative space, or you can uh, kind of go with big, slow, nice strokes. You can even set your breathing and the rhythm of your breathing with the rhythm of your hand movement to make the experience really holistic and to get all the benefit that a practice like this one can give us. If you need to go slower, please go slower. You can always pause my video. Just don't rush and never face an activity just because you want to mark a box and check 
something and so rush through it, but really try your best to uh, get the, you know, all the benefit that a practice like this can give you. After all, it's your personal choices and you're dedicating a little time to yourself, to something that maybe you like a lot, something that you're very comfortable with, familiar, but maybe for some of you it's something on the opposite side, right? Because you never get to practice art. Art is not really part of your uh, daily life. So you're pushing yourself a little bit outside of your comfort zone. So try to be really mindful and enjoy the every single step. Don't skip the steps or don't rush through them. And if it takes a little longer, you can always post the activity and complete it another day, right? The beautiful thing about the online video and they are there for you. And so if you have only 10 minutes or 15 minutes, so you can divide the same practice and the same video in two or three parts. So you don't have to rush through any of the parts and you can still be done maybe in the week and you have your beautiful weekly practice done and you dedicate some time to yourself, to your fine model skills, mental focus, right? And sometimes I just we do it because we, we need some relaxation, right? After all, artists use uh, uh, art therapy is now really very much used in uh, also uh, psychological therapy, right? Like an extra support, something more, something of course that doesn't substitute the other therapy, but that can enhance, right? The uh, effectiveness of a psychological therapy or counseling. Many, many therapists and many, many counselors also collaborate with art therapists to create like a, a series of holistic uh, practice and activity. So I also have so many people and so many subscribers that wrote me in the comment, which uh, once again, I thank you so much for your comment, for sharing your experiences uh, with my video. And beyond that, I thank you so much for giving me feedback that helped me to grow and offer you the best practice that I'm able to offer. But many people told me that they are using my video and my tutorial because they are recovering actually from a surgery or from an accident and they really, really need to have these fine motor skills up again, right? And coordination skills, brain, hand. And I'm so, I'm happy that I can somehow uh, help you out while I also help myself. Because as I reported and as I say several times that this, the fact that I have to sit down once or twice per week if I can to record the video and share this moment with you all, kind of gently forced me to sit down and practice art outside of my job and the school, right? The problem, and I love my job very much, and I'm so I feel very grateful and blessed that I can teach a subject of such art. But in school, there are like a very formal curriculum and lessons and every other duty that we have to cover in school, right? So for me, it's really a job, and I live um, the experience of making art for and with my students as part of my job. Instead, when I'm here, it's something that I'm doing spontaneously, right? And I am really free uh, to explore different practices, different techniques, and to just, you know, has been extremely therapeutic for me as well in uh, not very good days because we all have the days that we feel a little low, a little sad because life is life, right? And it happens. When I sit down, I kind of, uh, I don't want to say that I forget about everything else because sometimes I don't. I just kind of uh, embrace the way that I'm feeling in the day while I practice art. So while I get to stay still on a chair and moving my hands to fulfill a vision that I want to create on paper and sharing some of my feelings with you virtually, that it's really something different compared to my experience in school, right? 
when I have to be extremely supportive for to all of my students, I be I need to be extremely you know present and responsible. And in this case, uh, I don't really in school. I don't get to embrace right all of my emotion and feelings. So while with you here, I get to do so. So I really feel all the emotional benefit that the art gives me. Now you can play with your favorite colors. As I say, I might use different type of green. If you feel another palette for today, go for it. Go for it and then please, please, please don't forget to share your beautiful picture in our Facebook group that is growing little by little and it is called Art with Miss B. Please, if you didn't do so already, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and then uh, uh, ask to join that group you can see what other people are doing with my video all the modification alterations it's beautiful like it's like i am once again extremely thankful to all of you for making that happen i really appreciate that it's a wonderful experience and it's something else that can make us feel a little more like a virtual family, like more connected because, you know, computer is still a cold media, right? And we cannot physically be together. So it's another way to reinforce that relationship that we are, we are establishing, right? And we are creating. You can decide to do all the four leaves in the same color. You can decide to have a leaf in two colors. You can decide to have four colors for each leaf. You know, whatever you think that you wanna do, you will do. I'm just kind of giving you an idea, a foundation, and then you can really do what you feel like. Now we're going to color the positive. I really like these alcohol markers because they have the dual tip. And if you don't have them, I suggest you, you can buy them. This is Shadow Art. You can find them on Amazon. And I feel that they are really awesome. They lasted a long time. And you have both tip, thin and thick. So they are really flexible media that you can use for different type of design. I think that I will do this one again, this way in a vertical. If you're using just regular tip markers, the coloring will take a little longer. Please pause the video, take your time, do not rush, do your coloring properly, fill in all the white gaps. And now I need to choose a couple of green for the background. And I think that I will choose this one, which is a big favorite of mine. I love this kind of a deep turquoise that's definitely one of the color that I enjoy the most and today I really want to be surrounded by different type of greens Maybe let's play with this dark one. Why not? The medium one instead. Let's do this one. So now we are filling the negative space with the colors, right? So in this four space, you have a colorful positive, black negative, black positive, colorful negative, and so on and on. And this is good because you can visualize the importance of both, right? 
So sometimes when we paint something, if you do a still life or another type of subject, right, or you create a design, you really need to embrace the whole space of the design. So you really need to think about also the negative space. What element and details you're going to put in the negative space in the way that it will embrace the design without competing too much? What pattern you want to include in that? Or what color also? right to embrace and contrast and emphasize the main design now i'm switching to my extra fine sharpie any brand that you have available is uh, more than good we are going to do some beautiful nice uh, pattern another opportunity to review quality of the lines and we're going to do a nice uh, pattern once again if you want to do a different pattern go for it I will probably move my journal so I don't need to go on top of the design with my left hand. Take your time, go slow. The closer out the line for me, the prettiest is the design because you have more rhythm and more movement going on. Of course, when we say rhythm and movement, we're still talking about implied rhythm and movement, right? Something that is visual is not the same meaning that rhythm and movement have in music or performing arts. So these are also beautiful um, ideas for a conversation about the piece, right? If you are teaching kids or you're doing this uh, artwork with your child, the children, the grandchildren, or whatever, right? What does the rhythm mean in music and in dance? And what does it mean in art? In art, we have some rhythm through repetition and patterns, right? And then maybe this one, the two green, this green, they will have a different type of line. So I get also to exercise a more of a round and curved type of lines. So I'm giving myself the opportunity to use a different type of lines, different type of coloring technique. So the practice become more valuable, right? Because we are adding little challenge if you don't want to do it you want to keep it that way because maybe you're still learning and you still don't feel super fluent and proficiency line and you want to have the same practice so once again go for it you need you know yourself right much more than i do and uh, i want you to really stretch uh, adapt my practice to your own needs will and intentions If you need to go slower, once again, go slow. Now we're going to do the same. I'm going to do the same over here. I want to make sure that, yes, you can see the whole design nice. And once again, because we are doing those lines, free hands, they're, you know, beautifully done, but they have some nice original imperfection that makes them even better, prettier, I would say.
In these two, I'm going to replicate the straight type of lines. So now I need to focus because I'm switching back and I don't want to be confused and accidentally do a curved line. So this is when the mental focus kicks in because I really need to think about it, what I'm doing. Et voila. Now, in these other two, I'm not going to do a pattern for now inside, but I will create a pattern in the negative space. And I will use a type of a curved line that I use before in many patterns. And I love it because you kind of, you create these arches, let's say, and you close very, very, very well the edges. You know, they go in, really let them go in. And uh, this type of a uh, lines create a, a pattern that gives a lot of movement to the piece a little optical illusion which i really like they also make me think for some reason about muscles you know about the seafood and so they reconnect me somehow with the ocean and the sea which is one of my favorite natural environment and places to be if you want to do a different type you can do for example uh, diagonal lines that go straight in a direction and then in another and then in the direction then in another and see what happens I love those type of lines that I'm doing so much that I will keep it consistent and I will use them for the four spaces in the negative of this square once again the more like uh, the closer are the line the more the stronger is the optical illusion and the more effective is the pattern. So slow down. If you have a little overlapping uh, happening from the line it, to the lines, it's totally fine, even better. And here is like when after a while that you have been designing and coloring and doing lines, you might feel a little, I would say, discomfort or frustration, right? Because you have to stay focused and repeat over and over the same element. And for some of us, I would say for almost everybody, but for some of us, it might be a bigger frustration. I'm thinking about my kids in school. So I suggest you as I suggest to them, to take a little break, 3D breath, shake your hands, right? And once you're ready, you start again. Don't rush it for any reason, you know? Uh, it's better that you stop and maybe you even look at this practice on another day, that you just rush through it, basically eliminating all the benefits that a practice like this can give you, right? And the understanding of the practice itself. So in case that you feel the same, you maybe can stop here and rewatch my video another day and complete your practice. Or you can take a little break, drink something, shake your hands, shake your life. Look how beautiful is this um, nice, uh, almost optical illusion. And I will do the same over here because I really, really like it. And even if we are doing the same pattern, you will notice that here, because I use a different type of green, the black might pop a little more, might pop a little more, which also open uh, beautiful discussions and questions that you can ask yourself or you can ask your kids about 
the colors, right? And how those colors interact differently with the neutral color of black, with the tone of black. And why do you think that that happened, right? And how that, that does the contrast to make you feel? Is visually attractive to you or is not? Uh, you wish it was different. Uh, it's better than you expected and so on. And maybe it's going to give you also the idea of another practice because you can do another design similar and try something completely different with the colors and with the patterns, right? So once again, I'm trying my best to offer you foundations and inspiration for multiple practice. So with one video, you can potentially have two or three practice out of it. We can create different shapes inside the square, different design, and we might do it, in fact, in the future. So you can give yourself and your kids the opportunity to experiment with the positive and negative space. Contrast and just opposition, right? When you have a pattern underneath, this looks like it's uh, their place on top of this pattern. And voila, look how pretty, something so simple, something so like a basic, I would say, right? Can give you a beautiful design and many, many, many idea. Once again, we have straight diagonal, straight line, diagonal lines. So we have the black negative, colorful leaves. So we have the black positive, a beautiful, beautiful pattern created by these very curved lines. The same, we have a little bit like of different type of uh, patterns that you create in the lines. So, so a lot of beautiful ideas. I'm going to switch the camera so we can say goodbye after this short and sweet and juicy practice. Okay, friends, we did it. Today, as I say, we spend a little time together, 30 minutes of this nice, uh, simple, not intimidating, juicy practice. I call it juicy because it's so pretty and I cannot stop and look at it because look at that with simple element such as line, diagonal, straight and curved line and three colors. This is what I use. So maybe you use more. So a few colors and the black tone, we can have something beautiful interesting visually and you can also that can give you not only inspiration but also the opportunity to review and analyze further the concept of positive and negative space so the element of space again the element of lines the element of colors right and then investigate different type of pattern optical illusion and the illusion of rhythm the illusion of movement and the illusion of the texture i hope that you had fun and you enjoyed the practice for me it was just what i needed today and i see you soon for another uh, practice together. Ciao a tutti!